So I stopped taking notes in medical school, and doing so has allowed me to study more efficiently as a student while maintaining the same grades and allow me to live a more balanced life. And in this video, I'll be showing you how you can do as well. Hey friends, my name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Philippines, and I've been attending school for about 20 years now. 13 years of my primary and secondary education, 4 years of my undergraduate degree, and about 3 years so far in medical school. And for the bulk of my student life, I studied like most people, writing down my notes and rereading them afterwards. Whether handwritten or typewritten, I would meticulously transcribe the lecture basically word for word, and this was my system basically throughout my entire life from grade school all the way to college. But when I got to med school, I realized that I had to make a change. I stopped because I already had some idea that the pace of information in medical school would not allow me to use note-taking as an ideal method to learn the material before the exam. And this led me to creating a new study system based on the principles of active recall, space repetition, and practice testing. I've generalized a strategy that I'll be presenting in this video, so regardless if you're a high school, a college student, or a graduate student, you can apply these principles in whatever course you're studying. But before we start, let's define some terms first. In the past, I made videos discussing the scientific evidence behind active recall, space repetition, and practice testing, and why these techniques are the best for preparing for exams. But just as a brief recap, active recall is testing yourself with the reference material close. Space repetition is increasing the interval between reviews so that you remember them for longer. And practice testing involves, as the name implies, taking mock exams to simulate what the actual exam situation would be like. So I'm structuring this video around the five major components of my zero note-taking study system. These are planning, preview, view, review, and practice. And during this time, I tried to avoid taking any notes, highlighting, rereading, rewatching the lecture as much as possible because these are proven to be the worst study techniques out there. Before tackling any major project, it's always important to have a plan on how you go about it. And when it comes to exams, I always like to plan out the workload that I'll be distributing over the entire preparation period. And usually, this is over the course of a week. So the day before my week starts, I'm already planning the workload distribution I'll have for the coming week. What I generally do for my exams is that I make sure I've finished my first pass of material by the midway point of my timeline to the exam. So for example, if my exam is 7 days away, I should have finished my first pass of all the material by the third day. If you're just starting out, I recommend that you just start studying one day ahead for each of your lectures. So if you have a lecture on Monday, you start pre-reading for it on Sunday night, and then for your lecture on Tuesday, you start pre-reading for it on Monday night, and so on. The benefit of having a plan is that once you do start the week, you don't have to think hard about what you have to do next because you've already laid it out all beforehand and you just need to follow the steps that you need to take per day. So as I mentioned in the first step, I always like to pre-read my lectures. But what does it mean to pre-read? Pre-reading doesn't mean that you already go in depth head first to learn the entire material, but rather you try to get a general idea of what the lecture is about. This is what Ali Abdal refers to as scoping the subject. And what scoping the subject is, is that you go over the lecture slides or the PowerPoint to the previous year, and you look at the headers and subheaders of the different topics. This allows you to get a general idea of what the lecture will be about. So for example, if your upcoming lecture is about the heart, look at the slides and check what about the heart will you be learning about. Will you learn about the different diseases? Will you be learning about the anatomy? Will you be learning about the physiology? And so on. And that way, as you go over the lecture slides or lecture notes, you can create a framework in your head of the general ideas that you'll need to learn when you go to listen to the lecture properly so that you can organize the information better in your head. And another thing I like to do during the preview process is to Google the different terms that I don't understand. So for example, if I'm pre-reading a lecture for cancer and I come across terms like adenoma, blastoma, these are the terms that I'll Google beforehand so that when I watch the lecture in full, I'll understand what they mean and I can better organize them in my head. It's also helpful when you come across clinical symptoms that you don't understand so that you can put it in layman's terms so you can paint a better mental picture in your head. And now with a general idea of what the lecture will be about, it's now time to sit down for the live lecture or I watch the pre-recorded lecture at two times speed. And during the lecture, I try to take down concepts that I don't understand or concepts that the lecture emphasizes. From these, I'll create active recall questions using the toggle feature in Notion and later convert them into Anki cards. You can also alternatively just create the flashcards directly in Anki, but I prefer this method because I like having easy access to all my cards in one place. And for the concepts that I can't understand, I make sure to find a video online or a set of notes from the previous year that will accurately explain it. And I take screenshots of these and include them in my Anki flashcards. An alternative way to do this is to use pre-made decks such as the Anking deck, which is based on USMLE review material. This is especially helpful if you're still studying the basic medical sciences in medical school, such as biochemistry, physiology, pathology, and so on. But not particularly helpful if you're studying subjects that don't have any pre-made decks. So you'll have no choice but to create your own cards yourself. But make your own flashcards. The general rule is to not put too much information in your card 
and not to make too many cards because if you end up making a card with every single bit of information in the lecture, you'll end up with too many and you'll probably end up never going over all of them in time for your exam. I've made videos in the past on how I use Anki and Notion in medical school, so if you're interested on the specifics on how I use those apps, I'll leave links to the description down below. So now that you've viewed the lecture, now it's time to practice Active Recall. Now Active Recall isn't something you do after you've viewed all the lecture material, but something that you do in between each lecture. During my study process, what I like to do is that before I study the new lectures for the day, I like to review the cards that I made for the lectures the previous day. That way, I'm refreshed on my knowledge on those previous lectures and make sure that I've cemented my knowledge on them before moving on to a new set of information. But if flashcards aren't for you, there are other techniques that you can use to practice active recall, and one of them is explaining it to a friend. So you need not exactly explain it to a friend, but you can try practicing lecturing the material as if you were explaining it to a friend who isn't in medical school. And if you can explain the concept in the simplest terms without losing any substance about the concept, then you probably already mastered the material. And this is known as the Feynman Technique. If you're by yourself, a good way to practice this is to just write it down on a piece of paper and once you're done, refer back to the reference material to check what are the gaps in your knowledge and then review those so that you can fill in those gaps and then repeat this process again after some time to check if you retain the information. I particularly like the Feynman Technique because it's especially useful for lectures that are concept heavy and rely more heavily on your understanding of the material rather than just pure memorization. And this is something I want to emphasize in this video. More often than not, professors will include two-step questions in the exams that will require higher levels of thinking rather than just straight up regurgitating an answer. And by having an understanding of the different concepts within the lecture, you'll be able to connect them in different ways and these will more often than not generate most of the points on your exam. For example, when I was studying for an exam in infectious disease, I memorized the entire Jones criteria, but what I failed to do was to understand what each symptom meant in the criteria. So when it came to the exam and the question only contained a description of the symptoms and not explicitly what the symptoms were as based on the Jones criteria, I was stumped and naturally I got the question wrong even though I knew what the Jones criteria were. Because had I not just blindly memorized what each symptom was, I probably could have understood what the question was describing and answered the question easily. Now it's time for the final stretch of your exam preparation which is practice this. Now the thing about practice questions is that the relevance and availability of these questions will vary depending on the school that you attend. So try your best to find questions that will be helpful to you from professors, upperclassmen, or even online. And while doing these practice questions, take note of the concepts you're still unsure of or the items you get wrong, and make flashcards out of these concepts so that you can review them regularly before the exam. Personally, Practice questions are something I wish I had more of in my exam preparations because when I do find relevant practice questions online for my lessons, the concepts that I learn from them usually stick better than other methods of active recall that I previously mentioned. And with all this in mind, all step is to apply this process to every lecture and every exam that you have and you'll probably do reasonably well as long as you apply the concepts of active recall and spaced repetition properly. And you'll probably feel during the initial few times that you're trying out this process that it's really difficult because you're having to think really hard and that's quite natural and it's something that I experienced when I tried it out for the first time. But as you get used to it, the information becomes second nature and gradually become much much easier and you'll find that you recall the concepts quite easily. All of this in a shorter amount of time than it would take to reread the material four times over. So to summarize what I've gone over in this video, I've described my five-step plan to studying for exams, which is to plan, preview, view, review, and practice, after which you repeat the steps for every exam you have to prepare for. And the beauty about this framework is that there's no one specific active recall technique that you have to use, as you can use whatever you like from the final technique to anti flashcards. So if you're someone who's found success in school just writing down their own notes and rereading them for the exam, this framework isn't probably for you. It's more geared towards someone who's struggling in school despite putting a large amount of effort to study for exams. And if the latter applies to you, I suggest you try out this strategy and see how it goes. And if you want to check out my other videos on how I study in medical school, check out this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.